Hello students, welcome to Fatigue Analysis. I'm Dr. Stewart. Today we're gonna to do an example for notched fatigue. In this example, a double edge circular notched plate is subjected to cyclic loading at plus 10 kip and negative 10 kip. Find the cyclic stress range, delta sigma, the cyclic strain range, delta eta, the cyclic plastic strain range, delta eta PL, and predict the cycles to failure in F using the strain life approach. We're told to use Nweber's approach for finding the fatigue stress concentration factor, KF, and to use Ramberg-Osgood's relationship. We are given some details about this problem. We're told that it's a, a double edge notch sample. So it's gonna have this uh, configuration. It's loaded in tension with a load of P. I mean, it, it's loaded uh, in tension and compression at, at a load of plus or minus 10 kip. The radius is given as 0.1 inches of the uh, circular notches. The width of the plate is one inch and the thickness of the plate is 0.25 inches. The plate is made of a material called Steel X, which has a Young's modulus of 30 times 10 to the three KSI, that's 30 uh, MSI, a tensile strength of 110 KSI, and we're given the cyclic Ramberg Osgood uh, constants, K prime and N prime, of 150 KSI and 0.123 respectively. And we're given the manson coffin constants, A to prime at 1.142, B, which is equal to negative 0.081, and C, which is equal to negative 0.67. And we have a sigma F prime of 169 KSI. So we have all of our properties. Typically, uh, we would you know, be given the material name, and then we would go into the textbook and look up, look up these material properties from the tables. But here we just, we are given them directly. So again, this problem wants us to, to do a, uh, a couple of things. It wants us to find the, uh, basically the hysteresis loop properties of this material and predict cycles to failure. So uh, let's go ahead and get started on solving this problem problem by finding first the static stress concentration factor KT. We're going to find this factor using the chart that is specific to our geometry and loading condition, which happens to be figure 7.4 from the book. If we look at this chart, we can see a couple of things. We see we're given a sketch of the specimen with the dimensions labeled on it and the loading conditions. Uh, uh, placed upon it. If we look at the x-axis, we have a dimensional ratio of r over d, and then we have multiple lines inside of this uh, plot, each line representing a different ratio of h over d, and then finally there's the y-axis, which is the value of kt. So what we need to do is we need to find these different ratios of dimensions and then plot up and over to find our approximation in KT. Uh, now, it's not always uh, uh, the way our problems are set up and the dimensions, the way that they're labeled in the problem statement may not always match the schematics that are available in the book. In our case, we're given the width as a capital W, but in the chart, we see that the width here is labeled as H. So we're gonna to have to translate between uh, problem statements. This is a common thing that happens. Um, in doing that, we'll find that we are missing one of the dimensions that's um, on this chart. And that is the dimension lowercase d uh, that's, that's labeled on this specimen. So we'll find that using our dimensions where lowercase d is equal to 0.8 inches. And then we can go and find the ratios we want. First, the x-axis, which is r over d, which we find is 0.125. And then 
there are these lines. Which one do we want to choose? R as we call W over D inside of the chart. It's H over D, but it's the same thing. We've translated it, and R, we find it to be 1.25. Now, when we look at the lines that are available, 1.25 is not available. So what we do is we draw a red approximation line on top of our chart, which we'll use to then plot up and plot over to get an estimate of KT. When we're doing this, when we're creating our own kind of dotted line to represent a missing line, let's be a little bit conservative. And then also when we take our, our measurements here, when we go up and over, let's be a little conservative. In this case, reading the chart, we approximate KT to be about 2.42. In the next step, we need to find the KF factor, the fatigue stress concentration factor. We're told to apply Neuber's approach to finding it, so that's what we do. Where Q, the, uh, the um, notch sensitivity factor, is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus the square root of rho over R, where rho is a characteristic length, and where in Neuber's approach, we use a chart that's available in our book for figure 7.7 uh, .7 to plot uh, the, the value of that characteristic length as a function of tensile strength. Our material's tensile strength is 110, so we plot up, we plot over, and we estimate the character, characteristic length to be 0.06 times squared inches. We then plug that in into the equation for knot sensitivity, and in this case, uh, we, we modified it by just separating the rho and the r into their own square roots so that we could take that 0.6 and just plug it directly in to the equation. We find that q is equal to 0.841, and then subsequently the kf factor is equal to 2.194. Now that we have the fatigue stress concentration factor, let's go about applying Neuber's rule for ramberg osgood's equation. Now, Neuber's rule for ramberg osgood's equ uh, equation, it's a rule for how to treat notches and how notches uh, affect the stresses and strains that develop at the notches. How do we add the effect of notches? Neuber's rule simply gives us the left-hand side of this equation, where the strain energy is equal to Kf times the net stress, capital S, to the power uh, 2, divided by E, which is our Young's modulus. Uh, and then the right-hand side is our normal Ramberg-Osgood relation, sigma times in brackets sigma over E, plus in brackets sigma over K prime to the power 1 over N prime, right? So uh, this is pretty much the Weber's approach to Ramberg osgood How do we add the effect of the notch? The only extra thing we uh, equation that we need is a uh, equation for calculating that stress, that that remote stress, and in our case, uh, it's it's the net stress in the vicinity of the notch. So we're going to put the force P divided by D, which is the ligament uh, width times the thickness. And let's look at let's look at that D. See that D is the ligament width. How much area is in the vicinity of the notch? So, so, so D times T, all right? Okay, um, so now that we've got that equation established, let's go about finding our initial loading, where we start at zero stress and we load up to the maximum uh, value uh, during our fatigue cycle. So let's, let's find that, and, and it'll get us sigma one and eta one, of the cyclic stress strain curve. Uh, so we take the equation and we program it into, uh, into MathCAD here with our K prime and our N prime that we defined much earlier. And then here in MathCAD, we're doing a solve block. So we initialize sigma and say sigma is an initial guess of one KSI. We say given this equation, 
if we if this equation is true, find what is the value of sigma to, to make this equation true. We find that sigma 1 ends up being 74.9 KSI. With sigma 1 found, we then can find um, eta 1, the strain, as equal to the inner portion of this uh, um, equation, the inner portion of ramberg oscar Because remember, this is an energy equation. It's uh, uh, stress times strain. That's what these equations mean. So we go ahead and uh, program that up, and we find that uh, strain at position 1 is equal to 3.333 e to the negative 5. Now that we're at position 1, we now want to go through the first reversal. We want to actually find the hysteresis loop, the stabilized hysteresis loop, for this fatigue problem. The first thing we want to do is we want to... Oh, hold on a second here. So we've got to, for some reason, we're not seeing the equation. We should see the um, hysteresis loop form of... Uh, the ramberg osgood equation, where we replace sigma with delta sigma and eta with delta eta and, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, in that process, we find that we need to get a delta s, the range of the net stress that we're going to be undergoing. We put that together and we find we're going to be having a, a, stress, a net stress range of 100 KSI. So now we can proceed with solving the hysteresis loop form of ramberg osgood uh, and that is written inside of mathcad it's in this form where we replace s with delta s sigma with delta sigma and so on right so uh we're going to solve this using a solve block so we'll set an initial guess for delta sigma as one ksi we're going to give mathcad the equation on with the left hand and right hand side defined and then we're going to find what that delta sigma is. And we find it to be 149.8 KSI, right? We also want to get the strain range that we undergo. And that would be this inner portion of ramberg osgood of the, uh, of the uh, hysteresis loop form of ramberg osgood So we just write that again. We calculate that strain range to be 0.011. So now we've got, we almost got everything that we need. We, we wanted to get the stress range. We wanted to get the strain range, but we also wanted the plastic strain range. So let's put that together. Well, uh, total strain range is equal to an elastic strain range plus the plastic. We can rearrange that to say that the plastic strain range is equal to total minus the elastic range. We've already got the total. That's what we calculated um, with ramberg osgood we just need to add the elastic portion, which would be the stress range divided by modulus. We put that together, and our plastic strain range is 5.71 e to the 3. Now, our last step in this problem is we want to find cycles to failure. In this problem, we're going we're gonna to apply the manson coffin relationship to finding the cyclic fatigue uh, uh, failure. And that is this following equation, where the strain amplitude, or the strain range divided by 2, is equal to uh, the uh, sigma f prime over e times 2 times nf to the power b, plus eta f prime times 2 times nf to the power c. Right? We're going to use a solve block here. So we're going to initialize the cycles of failure as 1. We're going to give it this equation. We're going to ask it to find what is the correct value. And we find the cycles to failure is equal to 4,283, you can round up, cycles to failure. All right. So it looks like we've solved this problem um, following step-by-step -step procedure and uh, using the advantages of MathCAD, which is it allows us to pre-program variables. So if we define something earlier on, It'll be, it'll remember, and it'll, it'll uh, uh, actually allow us to solve for, for unknowns. Uh, one more or last thing I want us to do 
is to kind of visualize what it is that we did here. So what it is we did here is we actually created the stabilized hysteresis loop for this problem, for, for this particular problem. And it's the stabilized hysteresis loop, which in the vicinity of the notch. So this is local to the notch, where stresses and strains are calculated locally at the notch. We started at zero stress and strain, and we did our initial loading where we loaded up to sigma one and eta one, those two values we found, right? Using Ramberg Osgood. In fact, if we use Ramberg Osgood, we can actually plot the shape of that line using Ramberg Osgood equation if we made it a function, right? Then what we did is we wanted to find the stress range and the strain range. Well, that's taking us from position one all the way down to position two, where we're getting the stress range and we're getting the strain range, right? Now, once we have the stress range and the strain range, when we do continue uh, additional cycling, th because this is a stabilized hysteresis loop, we are just going to keep cycling over and over and over again over this same loop. So whenever we're doing these problems, let's initialize point one, then let's get the delta so we can get to point two, and then we've got our loops. We can draw our loops, right? So... Um, that's pretty much it for this problem. Uh, I hope you guys had a good time and it was uh, hopefully you understood the, the, uh, the problem well. If not, please leave a comment. I love reading comments and I'll uh, definitely answer any questions that you have. All right, well, I'll see everybody in the next video.